During this episode, Lizbeth Otruba, Chief Clinical Officer of Avisher, a pioneering company and market leader in virtual patient monitoring, joins us to discuss her vision to revolutionize inpatient care delivery through virtual telehealth technology. Additionally, Lizbeth shares how Avisher has helped health systems across the nation to create safer environments for patients, families, and caregivers with their advanced patient observation and communication platform. Join us to learn how Lizbeth and the Avisher family support augmented care with virtual teams. Let's go. Welcome to Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli, where we highlight and speak with the innovators, the game changers, and the pioneers who are deeply passionate and relentless in solving the problems our world is facing today. This is your opportunity to connect with and learn from these leaders and to support them on their mission. Perhaps they will soon be hearing your story as well. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you on this journey with us. Hi, Elizabeth. A warm welcome to our podcast. Thanks, Mike. Great to be here. Well, because of your vision to revolutionize inpatient care delivery through virtual technology and your pioneering work as an industry nurse executive committed to the continuous improvement of healthcare and the diffusion of new technologies to drive patient and staff safety, I'm honored and excited to have this chat today. But before we dive in, a bit of housekeeping. While listening to any of our episodes, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast so you will automatically receive episode updates in your podcast player. Simply search Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And lastly, please visit the bottom of the episode notes to connect with me on LinkedIn and Twitter in order to further the conversations occurring on this podcast. All right, Elizabeth, it's almost time for our community to learn how you and the Avisure team are developing, deploying, and supporting monitoring solutions that improve patient and staff safety, as well as the efficiency and efficacy of patient care. But first, what's that one piece of advice that you would give to others who are passionate about reimagining the health of our world? That's a great question. I'm excited to answer it. But first, I want to say I love the title of your podcast, Passionate Pioneers, and I'm honored to be called that. I, I'm gonna, well, we're fired up to have you here. There's a reason why you're on the podcast because your work has been so important, which I know we're going to dive into. So thank you for the shout out to the title of our podcast. But trust me, you have a seat at this podcast table for sure. <laughs> so I think I'm a third generation nurse and I've been in healthcare for 35 years. Many years I worked in the ICU setting, very high tech setting. And now I work in a technology company. And so here's what I think is a really important piece of advice. What I can tell you about the role of technology in reimagining healthcare is it's extremely difficult to design and develop technology that's simple. And so I think that's what we try to keep in mind always is we're doing the hard work to make the technology reliable and intuitive. Because at the bedside, they don't have time for that. I am so grateful. Actually, you're the first person that has said this as this piece of advice, and I'm grateful for it. It is so difficult to create you know, very simplistic technology that is also powerful, intuitive, and works, right? It's incredibly difficult. Yes. I can't tell you how many times as a bedside nurse, I worked with technology and you know, complained. And obviously, a nurse didn't design this. <laughs> it's so true. Well, and you know, that's the thing too. You know, I'm very fortunate. I get to advise and mentor a lot of startup entrepreneurs. And that's one thing that I mentioned to them time and again, get out from behind your desk, go out into the field, work alongside nurse Lizbeth, work alongside her and her colleagues, get to know their problems, understand how that technology interfaces with them, patients, or anybody else who may be touching that piece of technology. Incredibly important to see and get that feedback in real time of where, you know, not just in theory, but how is it actually working in the real world? And it sounds like you've had those exact experiences as a nurse as well. Yes. Yep. I couldn't agree more with you. Well, thank you for that. And I know we're going to dive into all that here in just a moment, Lizbeth, in regards to how Avisure is building that technology to be simple, to be powerful, and to be reliable every single time a practitioner is working with it. I can't wait to dive into that and much more after we get back from thanking our community champion sponsor. Located in Denver, Colorado's nationally ranked River North District, Catalyst is a healthcare innovation campus that brings together stakeholders from across the industry to accelerate innovation and drive real, lasting change our nation desperately needs. 
from established organizations to startups, from accelerators to advocacy organizations, and from medical schools to global companies. Everyone at Catalyst works side by side to create, develop, refine, and bring to market cutting edge innovations that will fundamentally transform healthcare as we know it. With industry leaders like Medical Group Management Association, Olive, Medical Solutions, UC Health, Cirrus MD, and many others calling Catalyst home, along with innovative pioneers visiting from across the nation. Catalyst continually fosters their foundational belief that collaboration and partnerships will move the healthcare industry forward. To virtually tour Catalyst and claim your space on campus or host an upcoming event, visit CatalystHealthTech.com or visit the top of the episode notes and click on their link. All right, we are back with Elizabeth Votruba, Chief Clinical Officer at Avashirt. Elizabeth, thank you so much for teeing us up on the front end. You're 100% spot on. It is very difficult to make technology simple and effective. Again, getting out of our offices, getting out of theory land, and getting out into the real world and working alongside these practitioners and patients and consumers, that's where the magic happens. So can't wait to hear more about how you and the team at Avashur doing that. But first, Elizabeth, you aren't a serial technologist, if you will. You were actually within a healthcare system for a number of years before joining Avashur. I'm looking forward to hearing about that, your journey of how you connected with the Avashur team and how the experience has been going. And of course, where you see things heading in this space, not just for the industry, but for your organization as well. And then on the back end, of course, we want to ask how we can be helping you. But first, Elizabeth, take us back. Like I said, you were with a health system for over 10 years and then found yourself over at Avisher. Can you discuss your journey of how it came to be to where you are today? I think most good innovation stories have a bit of serendipity in them. And so does my story. And I was a clinical nurse specialist and a magnet program director. And the magnet recognition is about excellence in nursing at Mercy Health St. Mary's in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And a career highlight was helping to build a new tower in 2008. And we really wanted to envision the future. And so we wanted acuity adaptable rooms, meaning that the room, 64 rooms would be equipped for patients from different levels of acuity. So you wouldn't have to do as much shuffling with patients and had the idea of maybe a virtual ICU. So there we put a really high, nice, high resolution pan tilt zoom camera in every room, two-way audio and infrared illuminator. And then we opened, we built in 2008, but we opened in early 2009. And so the economy had changed so much during that time that our big dreams of having virtual ICU weren't practical in early 2009. And I was overseeing the cardiac telemetry unit. And I think we all kind of decided, well, we'll use this video for something and let's have it go to the cardiac telemetry unit. I certainly didn't want video going to the nurse's break room because I had enough times been interrupted while I was trying to eat, you know, in a 12 hour shift, nurses need to have their break. So I went to the telemetry techs who were busy monitoring telemetry, you know, cardiac monitors. But we were surprised to see if they each got a few of the highest fall risk patients, that when they talked to those patients, they were able to redirect them quite easily. And so this idea of what we now call a telesitter solution was born there. And we had to make the case to staff that. So there was no evidence in the literature at that time that that was feasible or effective. But I saw it working. And I remember the first patient that they talked to and just reminded him he was in alcohol withdrawal, reminded him he was in the hospital and to stay in bed. And he said, oh, okay. And it worked without him falling or interrupting staff frequently. So prior to that, nurses had used one-to-one sitters for those types of patients. So that is 24-7, someone sitting in a chair, watching the patient awake and asleep and with family and eating and kind of intrusive and very expensive. And so when we saw that this could work, I remember kind of trotting down the hallway behind the CFO and (laughs) saying, Randy, you know, we could use 12 sitters for 12 patients or one telesitter for 12 patients. Let's try it. And so we got funding from the foundation and Avisher was at that time mainly a security camera company, a surveillance company. And we learned together For the first five years, I stayed there within Trinity Health, and it started to expand to other Trinity hospitals. And the founder and CEO of Avisher 
let go of the security side of the company and just focus totally on healthcare. I joined in 2014 and we had, I believe, 25 hospitals at that time when I joined. And now we're over a thousand. So we are really meeting a desperate need and even more so now to elevate care at the bedside and support virtually in a way that really matters and it's really effective. Wow, what a story. And you're right, serendipity. It's amazing how that can play into our journey, right? But Elizabeth, I got to ask, there you are. You're a trained nurse. You spent your career as a clinician working in a health system. Did you ever think that you were going to go work full time for a tech company? Never, never. I want to be a helicopter nurse. (laughs) Well, that would have been pretty cool too, though. That would have been cool too. But just on Thanksgiving, my brother was saying something like, oh, and you used to be a nurse. And I said, hold up. No, I am still a nurse. I am a nurse. And I am, I think, practicing nursing in an important way and really elevating the profession. And a mentor told me once that the nursing profession shapes you and you have a duty to shape the profession. And I told you earlier, I was a ICU nurse. I love the tech, I, you know, all the equipment in the room. And I would get frustrated with things that weren't designed well. And now I'm taking on that role to make sure that the voice of nurses and ultimately patients are heard as we design technology that it makes sense and it's reliable. And I also have a big passion for nurses to have influence in multiple areas, not just the traditional way that you think of nursing. I absolutely love it. Well, so let's go there, Elizabeth. You know, you're working for a tech company, so let's talk about the company itself. I'm sure you've done this many a times. Let's hear that elevator pitch. Who is Avisher? Yeah, health systems right now are struggling with nurse and support staffing, and they are not winning the quality battle. And so what we provide is an integrated single platform solution created by nurses for nurses that enables video-based patient monitoring and virtual nursing to enhance clinical care without placing any additional burdens on the existing staff. And of course, you know, as well as I do, Elizabeth, it has been a trying time to put mildly over the past couple of years with COVID and burnout and where we are in staffing. How has this been received or what is it? Has there been new light shined on Avisher through the pandemic, like, oh my gosh, this is needed now more than ever, given where we currently are with, you know, the realities of staffing, the realities of the lack of nurses in the industry. What has that been like for your company through these very trying times of, you know, hopefully coming out of COVID, but even during it and leading up to it? Yeah, I think I feel like I am meant to be at the place that I am right now. I think that's beyond serendipity. It's kind of, I believe that there's a purpose into your journey. And so I really am where we're supposed to be now. And so we had years of implementations and learning and building a strong platform so that when we came into COVID, we were ready. So as I mentioned, this was 2009. We've been in this business for 14 years and really focused on acute care hospitals and We understand their wireless networks, and one of the devices that we sell is a mobile wireless device, and so there's no test like that of your wireless infrastructure, and we've been doing that for years and have built a team of clinicians and nurses, 15% of our employees are nurses, that really support the implementation. So, of course, as you can imagine, there was a huge increase in demand for this type of virtual care during COVID, but we were ready to meet it. We weren't a startup that had just started and desperately trying to ramp up to meet the needs. So we were able to do that and we were able to provide, I think, 700 extra free licenses so our customers could, you know, pull up stations right at the nurse's station so that nurses could see into rooms because Usually with a telesitter solution, it's not a nurse, it's a sort of a safety ambassador or, or an unlicensed like a nursing assistant who's, you know, watching a pool like a lifeguard and keeping patients safe. But we've kind of evolved into allowing clinicians to use the same system, single platform, integrated with the electronic health record and their communications. And so in COVID, patients were there with the door closed now. And so you couldn't hear them as well, and you couldn't respond as quickly to a safety issue. So having the device to be able to see in the room and see when they've removed their oxygen and before you're getting the trigger of the 
physiologic monitors saying that they're destabilizing. You're actually visualizing them ahead of time and communicating with them and not having to go in as often. So we've seen a big growth. And then with COVID and, and towards the tail end now, I hope it's the tail end, there's nurses have finally been exhausted and are retiring and 52% of nurses are considering leaving their job. And so really right now, especially in from 2020 to 2021 was a big increase in nurse turnover. I think they didn't want to abandon their fellow soldiers in the middle of the battle, but now they're tired. So we are now launching virtual nursing or the telenurse solution as well, where a virtual mentor nurse can support those newer nurses at the bedside. What an exciting program and obviously very much needed because it is an absolute crisis that we're staring down in the industry right now. So Elizabeth, thank you for sharing kind of a little bit of that overview of what it's been like on the journey for the company and the products. So I see three big stakeholders that probably have a lot of strong feedback for this in a good way. And the three that I can immediately think off the top of my head is the patient, the clinician, and the administrator, right? When we start thinking about running the business, what does this look like operationally in regards to bringing these types of technologies into the setting? What has the response been from by and from the patient? the clinician, and the administrator? That's a great question. I think you pretty much nailed it. (laughs) I was wondering what you were going to come up with as the top three, and I I think I would agree. So let's, of course, start with the patient. And and one of our clients and, and partners is Oregon Health and Sciences University, and they published a great article in the Journal of Nursing Care Quality about their patients and families experience with this type of virtual care. And there was a strong preference with patients and families to have a virtual video-based sitting versus having a person sitting in their room, like staring at you while you sleep. And the families felt like they were more able to go get respite. Okay, this is here. I can go home and take a shower or I can sleep at home maybe even and come back. So the patients and their families have really appreciated it. I even heard a patient talk about his experience, and he had both a sitter and a virtual sitter, and he said he was confused post-op delirium, and he said, though, he did have this, like, he felt like he needed to entertain the sitter. So I'd be like, um, do you want to play cards? What do you want to watch? <laughs> and so having a device really is less intrusive and also less intrusive for Patients who are going through alcohol withdrawal are often need that extra layer of safety and having a person sit in the corner of the room can be escalating to certain types of patients as well, or volatile patients. So, And then for the nurses, the caregivers, they also appreciate because what it does is it frees up their helpers, their ancillary staff, their nursing assistants to help with all their patients, not to be stuck in one room with one patient. While meanwhile, the call lights are going off for the other 10 or so patients that they're covering. So, and I've had nurses say also, oh, I really feel like I have an extra set of eyes. And so you can be fully present with the patient you're with without having like that one ear that's out for, you know, Marge down the hall who, you know, just got her hip replacement, but doesn't remember where she is. And you're trying to listen to a bed alarm. So for nurses and then for virtual nursing, uh, to have a mentor nurse who might be someone towards retirement who can't meet the physical demands of the bedside, but can help virtually and help with some of the documentation, admission, and discharge process with patients, which is a lot that can be done virtually as well as patient education. But this is something surprising, Mike. The main reason why a bedside nurse reaches out to a virtual nurse is for emotional support. That's the number one reason that they're reaching out. And I think that is a sign of the times. There's a, not only is there a shortage of nurses, but there's an experience gap, which is happening. The more experienced nurses are retiring. The newer nurses didn't get a great clinical experience. They didn't get as much hospital rotations when they were there. The mentors weren't available. They were stretched too thin. A lot of things were done with simulation rather than real. And so the turnover of a new grad nurse is very, very high because it's not what I expected. I don't have, you know, I'm all on an island by myself. So that emotional support is great for bedside nurses and clinicians as well. And then on the administrative side, vacancies to the point that beds are shut down or care units are shut down. So revenue is being impacted. So anything that supports 
bedside nurses and helps them with the flow too. So as I mentioned with virtual nursing, it's a lot of help on the flow of admission and discharge process. So that helps free up bottlenecks. Everybody loves that, including the patient actually. And also they help a lot with quality. So it's demonstrated and there's article after article of systematic reviews showing that the telesitter solution decreases falls and decreases adverse events and prevents workplace violence against caregivers. So all three of those personas that you mentioned have a stake. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing all of that and really painting a picture, a clear picture of how it is impacting them and fascinating in regards to nurses reaching out for that emotional support. It's so powerful. Wow. Thank you again for highlighting that as well. I will just tell you one virtual nurse told me that a new nurse reached out to her and said, am I doing a good job? (laughs) I mean, and if you don't think you are, then you have moral distress and that's it. And then you've lost just such a precious resource. Wow. Yeah. It is an important story to be shared and for others to understand that this is a need out there. And and so glad to hear that, you know, a company like Avisher is there to be able to help support. It's powerful. You know, let's also now, let's take the crystal ball off the shelf, if you will. Let's take a peek into it. Let's look a little future state. You know, as well as I do, you even mentioned it earlier in the episode that there was a huge uptick in the use of your guys' technologies and products, of course, during the pandemic. And things are only continue to accelerate in regards to this notion of change and technology and innovation in healthcare. We're at a crossroads where it has to happen. We can no longer continue to sustain or do what we've always done because there's just too much demand on the industry. And so with that, Elizabeth, what are you and the team seeing, you know, future state next two to three, three to four years, three to five years that we need to be thinking about as leaders in the industry? And then, of course, where is Avisher going to be in all of that uh, future state as well? What's the roadmap look like? Give us a little bit of that crystal ball vision of what you're seeing. Yeah, we have a very thoughtful roadmap of the next three to five years. And some of those areas would include leveraging artificial intelligence in an intentional outcomes focused way. There are great opportunities for that, but it must be done not just shiny object, increasing the amount of alarms to clinicians type way. So we are really investing resources in doing that and doing that well without measurable outcomes. And then I'm sure you've heard this one before, but seamless integration. So integration with the electronic health record. We're partnering with the big electronic health record vendors and and communication devices. And I really, I see a day in the near future where every hospital room needs to have some sort of camera. And so we want to be that scalable single platform that can provide all the different efficiencies of that kind of edge device in patient rooms. And we have a strong track record of impacting patient safety. We want to also impact patient quality and the outcomes on that end. And then continue with what we've been doing is leveraging data. We have a huge database with over a million patients in it across many years, and that helps lead to more predictive insights as well. So we're leveraging that and we'll continue to lead and be the experts on the clinical implementation and processes. An exciting horizon, and that's not very far away because these types of technologies are here. They're being scaled quickly and being implemented, and I think also the industry is ready for them. And so this sounds like a very exciting uh, near future for you and the team. So thank you for sharing that. But we'll, so we'll put the crystal ball away for a little bit. We'll come back to current state, of course. Elizabeth, we'd love to always help our guests. So what's that one problem, need, or question that you and the team have that our community can be helping you with? I think I really believe that good patient experience starts with nurses. So you really can't take care of others. You can't give to others if you aren't um, taken care of. So I really would hope that listeners invest in the well-being of nurses in every way that means. And I think that involves protection from workplace violence and keeping like the Maslow's lowest (laughs) need is to feel safe. And so there are some areas where nursing is not even very safe. And I think I've seen a huge change in my years as a nurse in the behavioral health issues. And and it's not just behavioral health issues, but it's also dementia and you get fear-based aggression that, that comes from patients. And so really investing in the well-being of nurses is going to lead to better patient experiences and more efficiencies. And so anything, and that's not just virtual care, but it's really valuing the profession. 
Well, for our community members that are also passionate about the well-being of nurses, how can they get a hold of you, have those conversations and discuss that with you, whether it be you know, contact points online, social media handles, websites, or otherwise, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, my LinkedIn is very easy, Lizbeth Votruba. There are no other Lizbeth Votrubas with that spelling. <laughs> and also avasher.com. Easy enough. And we'll have all of those contact points online. We will have the only Lizbeth Votruba LinkedIn URL in the episode notes. There's only one. So that's going to be in there. And of course, a link uh, over to their website as well. Just head on into your favorite podcast player, scroll down and click in the episode notes to find those contact points. You can also head over to our free global online community at passionatepioneers.com. There will be a post for this episode where you can also leave comments, feedback, and suggestions as well as to get those contact points online. Again, over at passionatepioneers.com. Lizbeth, this has been an important conversation, a timely one and a needed one. This is something that we need to keep a focus on in our industry. So I thank you for coming and discussing this. But before we get out of here, we have one more I ask of you. It's a fill in the blank. I'm a passionate pioneer because? Because I believe in the importance of nursing influence. So nurses are voted every year the most trusted profession. I want us to also be one of the most influential professions. I love it. I love it. You are certainly passionate about this subject, and that's why it has been such an honor to have you on the episode today. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. I look forward to continuing to follow you and the team's journey. But for now, Elizabeth, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us today on Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. We'd love to hear your feedback about the podcast so we can continue to improve this community and to further support the pioneers being featured. Lastly, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast and invite your friends and colleagues to join us. This is Passionate Pioneers with Mike Baselli. I look forward to having you back with us during our next episode.